To uh, Software Circus Spooky Edition. This is one of the talks that I've been very excited about. As you heard at the end of the last talk, we actually got some Twitter interaction from John Romero in the run-up to this one. Adam and I have known each other for a long time, and Adam was fundamental in the Software Circus since pretty much day one. Adam and I have been at maybe not hundreds, but certainly almost hundreds of uh, Software Circus meetups together. Uh, and I'm a big fan for anything that's 90s gaming. Uh, just before we jump into it, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors again, Equinix Metal, Cycloid, Giant Swarm, Instana, and Kinfolk. Uh, they still have people in the booths. Go and say hello to them. And of course, Container Solutions, who not only have been putting all this together in the background, uh, not only for whom Adam works, but also uh, have sponsored the 200 t-shirt raffle. Uh, Adam, are you ready? Yes, I am. Take it away. and welcome to this Doom slash GitOps nostalgia talk. We are going to hit it off against the armies of hell on the moon of Mars called Phobos, as in the uh, classic Doom. First of all, to stop the demons from invading Earth, we need to take a look around and check the base's GitOps defenses. So we are starting with a uh, GitOps setup where we have three Kubernetes clusters, one for uh, development environments, one for staging environments, and a production Kubernetes cluster. Each cluster is hosting a namespace for uh, each team. So every team in the company, in the uh, Space Marine Forces, has a, uh, as a namespace, as a development staging production namespace. And each namespace has a corresponding uh, GitOps repo holding the YAML files that define the applications running on this namespace. And then each cluster has a Jenkins that is syncing all the changes from this repo to the namespace. You can take a quick look inside what's in one of these repos. You can see we have YAML files. We all love YAML files. And we have an app one deployment YAML here describing application one, application two, etc. You can imagine the rest. We could have services, ingresses, all other Kubernetes objects in the GitOps repo being synced by Jenkins to the right namespaces. So this is the setup that we are starting out with. And now we will be fighting the demons together by you guys choosing which solutions do we implement to make this GitOps setup stand up against the demons from hell. First of all, the first scary problem of GitOps is how do we provision all this stuff? Whenever a new team is joining, now they don't only, now that we have GitOps, they don't only need their namespace and start deploying to it. They will need to be registered in Jenkins so they get a deployment pipeline. They will need a a GitOps repository, they will need to be pushing to that GitOps repository. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be provisioned for every team. Let's see what kind of options do we have to do this. First of all, we could build a command line tool that connects to all the services that uh, are needed to the, to the Git server, uh, to Jenkins, to everything, and uh, create the uh, create the resources that are needed. We could build this with uh, with Go, Python, Java, whatever. 
And the downside of a command line tool is that whoever is running this tool needs to have access to all the systems. Next, we could use Terraform. Terraform would also hold the state of our environment. And uh, the, the problem with, and, and it would be great. However, the problem with Terraform is whatever it doesn't support out of the box needs to be implemented as a Terraform provider, which is uh, not trivial to do. Finally, we could build an operator that would be running on a Kubernetes cluster and being driven by custom resources to create all the, all the services that a team needs. Now, at this point, will come your time to choose which solution are we going to implement. So three, two, one, go to the, uh, to the poll in Brella and use that to choose your solution. That was one scary mancubus that we managed to kill. And we move on to the next level, the nuclear plant. Here we will need to deal with how do we give feedback to developers whether their deployment succeeded. Without GitOps, uh, we like to make a CI pipeline finish with a deployment to Kubernetes and maybe monitor that a deployment has successfully finished. However, GitOps puts this Git repo in between the CI pipeline and the team's actual namespace, which is great to have this Git repo here for all the history and all these, uh, all the pull requests and everything that it provides. That's why we love GitOps. However, uh, it does break this assumption that the CI pipeline, when it finishes and we want it to deploy, that it actually has deployed something because it only pushed YAML files to a Git repo whether the synchronization has succeeded, whether the application actually started up, uh, is doesn't tell us that. So let's see what options do we have to solve this challenge. First of all, we could uh, use our monitoring system to do this. Prometheus could monitor whether the deployment has come up and send out alerts and do some uh, nice charts in Grafana. The downside of this is that uh, Prometheus would actually have to monitor Kubernetes resources because the application in Kubernetes is never going to be down. It's just that the new version doesn't start up and the old one will be kept around. So Prometheus, it's non-trivial to implement to Prometheus to see the problem here. Next is sending a Slack message. So basically implementing the checking of the deployment in the Jenkins or whatever other tool like Flux or Argo CD is implementing this, uh, this, this synchronization here. This tool could send a message to Slack. This is pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, the CI pipeline would still finish as green, but at least in Slack, you could see uh, that something has gone wrong. Third, the CI pipeline could wait, which is a quite peculiar solution. But, uh, but it can be done with, uh, I've once implemented this with Jenkins, that the CI pipeline pushes the YAMLs into the GitOps repo and then uh, actually stops and waits. Uh, and then the other Jenkins or the, well, whatever tool you use here to, to synchronize to the cluster would actually make a callback and allow the pipeline to finish. This gives basically a, it's a bit of a complex solution, but it does give the original UX back to developers. So here we go with the uh, next uh, poll. Choose your solution now. Kill that imp. Nicely done. Let's move on to the toxin refinery. So how do we update Git from our CI pipeline? So 
GitOps is really great when we look on the right side of this picture. We are syncing YAML files to Kubernetes. We have the history. We have all this good GitOps stuff. The left side of the picture, however, looks a bit uh, more complicated because now a CI pipeline actually has, to, if we want to have automated deployments, that is, and we don't want to be editing this Git repo by hand, then our CI pipeline has to be pushing changes to it automatically. And Git is not exactly designed to be easy to automatically update. We have to clone it, uh, make changes to YAML files, push the changes or create a pull request, etc. This can also cause conflicts between multiple CI pipelines pushing to the same repo. And this is as far as I could go in this uh, helmet before I would suffocate. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's our problem, how to implement pushing YAML files to Git uh, programmatically. First of all, we can implement this as a simple script at the end of the pipeline. We could implement an API service and put that in front of Git to uh, queue any changes coming from CI pipelines. So this way the CI pipelines can have a nice API to use and any changes going to Git would be queued. So they don't have, so there is there no conflicts would be happening. And sometimes we could even use the uh, Git servers API to do this, like when we're just updating a simple file. Mm -hmm. And the third one is the is watching the image registry. So in the third solution, and especially Flux is the tool that does this, it can watch the image registry for changes. So the CI pipeline doesn't actually push YAML files to Git. Instead, it just pushes an image to the registry and Flux reacts on that and deploys it. And then to actually keep the GitOps, because this of course breaks kind of the GitOps principle of making any changes through Git. So Flux can push these changes back to Git. So choose your solution. We killed the Baron of Hell. Great job. Let's move on to command control. So the next problem of GitOps is there are, uh, we can do it with Jenkins. If we just uh, start uh, start simple, we can just write a, a script in Jenkins. It does it or any other basically general purpose CI tool that reacts on Git changing and then does the kubectl apply to the cluster. However, there are some uh, tools that are specifically designed to do this. So let's take a look. First of all, our first choice is just sticking with good old Jenkins, or you can take that as any other CI tool of your choice, like GitLab or whatever that is not specifically designed to do GitOps, but it can get the job done if you write a little script in it. Second is Argo CD. Argo CD is a tool that uh, can act as your central brain for all GitOps operations for all teams over many namespaces and many clusters. It has a nice UI, so you get a nice overview of what's happening with your deployments. And yeah, and it can manage everything nicely and, and, uh, and centrally. But it's a, it's a pretty heavy tool that then takes over all your GitOps operations. Flux, on the other hand, is a, is a much simpler tool that only monitors a single Git repo and then synchronizes that whatever is in that Git repo. So in this case, let's say we have in that Git repo things related to one namespace. So we would run many Flux instances to, to synchronize many Git repos mm -hmm. to the cluster Finally, Jenkins X. Jenkins X is a very interesting tool that has nothing to do with Jenkins, but it's from the creators of Jenkins. So they stuck to the name. I guess the X sounded cool. So Jenkins X basically implements a GitOps setup with 
tacked on, where the CI will be tacked on, the synchronization to the cluster will be done by tacked on. And Jenkins X basically creates everything, sets this all up and acts as a control plane with a UI on top of all this. So it's a, it's a very different tool than Flux, or, than Flux or Argo. The downside of Jenkins X is that it's geared towards managing a single team. So you would have to, so, and it's a pretty heavy tool with all kinds of open source projects cobbled together like Helm chart repository and so on. So you'd have to run this for uh, separate instances for separate teams. So here is the time to choose your preferred solution. Bam, there goes the lost soul. We won another battle, let's move on. By the way, if you're wondering, I will get back to your choices at the end of the talk, but there is a uh, delay in the transmission from uh, to, to Mars, it's from Earth, so uh, I can't do that in real time. Next, we're entering Phobos Lab. Um, how do we structure? You might people who have done GitOps already might have already been wondering why is it one team and one namespace for a team on one cluster? Uh, in my examples, uh, that's one way to do it. There are many different ways, as uh, shown here, how to connect apps, teams, namespaces, Git repos, and clusters. So I'll give you a few choices to choose your preferred one. First is the one from my examples, repo per namespace. So basically a team's development environment would be one Git repo. So it would contain multiple applications in that one uh, GitOps repository. And then the team's production environment would be another mm -hmm. GitOps repository. So the, uh, the upside of this solution is that you can have different access rights on different repositories. So let's say the production repo can only be written to by ops, for example, why developers can happily write to the, to the development environment. The downside of this solution is you'll have lots of Git repos and the management of those can get, uh, can get tough. The next option is repo per team. This lessens the number of Git repos and all environments will be in a single Git repo. So that means that there is less Git repos to manage, but you can't really say that somebody can't access production but can access the development environment. Finally, a repo per cluster is an interesting solution. You would have a repo for everything that is on one cluster. And if you are using few clusters, meaning lots of teams on a single cluster, this is going to be a massive Git repo. And the upside of this solution is, uh, this is an ops, as, as a gear towards ops solution. So for companies that have that want to have full control over their, uh, their production cluster, for example, that only operations can, uh, can do anything to the production cluster, Basically, such a GitOps repo is made for ops to work with. It's not made for developers to, uh, to, to really work with. So it's a quite different solution from the previous two, even though it just looks like a simple uh, change in, uh, in the layout. So which solution would you choose? Yep, the pinky demon is dead. Let's move on to central processing. So change management, this is one of the big, uh, big features of GitOps that you get change management out of the box. You get a Git repo over which you can manage pull requests, people can merge, can propose changes, others can merge it and so on. So, and you get a nice history. So you get auditing and everything out of your Git repo. So, but there are also different ways to do this. It's not always trivial. 
let's let's see what are our solutions here. One is only ops can merge ERs. That's of course the heavyweight enterprise solution. The second is development team peer reviews pull requests. This is a pretty smooth process, but it still indicates that people are afraid to merge uh, pull requests just uh, automatically. Because the final uh, best solution is, uh, well, I'm kind of uh, telling you what to vote for here, but well, we can always have our favorites, right? So continuous deployment, of course, is where everything uh, where there is no approvals happening over the GitOps repo because the fact that a PR has been merged into the, the uh, source repo and the image has been built and tested that is trusted to go straight to production and there is no more, uh, no more pull request needed over the GitOps repo. So let me know which one uh, you prefer. Yep, the caco demon is dead. Let's move on. We are nearing the uh, final stages of the Phobos base. Computer station. Secret management. This is a tough one. We are getting towards uh, the, uh, the end. Things are getting tough. Uh, how do we get basically these database credentials into the application running in the production environment. It's very sensitive. It's not that simple to just chuck them into the GitOps repo, other because then we would have secrets versioned in Git, which is terrible, especially since we want this repo to be open for reading, for auditing, and so on. So it's, uh, uh, so it's really not a good idea to put the credentials in here. Argo, so yeah, let's take a look at our options. First is uh, using a centralized secret management uh, system like Vault, in which case we are kind of uh, sidestepping the GitOps process by putting the credentials here and the application pulling the credentials from Vault mm -hmm. using a client library. GitOps can be involved in the sense that the uh, maybe a uh, reference to the credentials would be coming from the from the GitOps repo being synced uh, as a as a parameter for the uh, for the application, but then the actual pulling of the credentials happens in the application. Next, sealed secrets. Sealed secrets is a solution where we actually put encrypted credentials into as, as a Kubernetes YAML file into the, uh, the GitOps repository. And these get synced as a sealed secret resource by our GitOps tool. In this case, I'm drawing Argo CD for random reason. And uh, they get uh, synced to Kubernetes. And in Kubernetes, there is a sealed secret operator running, which will decrypt the sealed secret and create a Kubernetes secret out of it, which would then be consumed by the application. So this is a very GitOps solution. Finally, plain old Kubernetes secrets. I put this here because this is a very much used solution where we just say somebody puts the secret in Kubernetes and basically Kubernetes is our secret storage and we are again sidestepping uh, the, the GitOps process. So this also kind of shows that, that GitOps is not that amazing for managing secrets. Besides sealed secrets, I don't know about any other uh, method that would be explicitly using the GitOps flow for, uh, for secret uh, management, although there probably are some. So please choose uh, your preferred solution. And 
here we go to Phobos Anomaly, the final boss fight. And this one is going to be quick and dirty. Which one would you choose? Inside those GitOps repos, you also can store different things like Helm charts or customized templates or just plain Kubernetes YAML files. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have strong opinions on, uh, on this one here. So I won't even go into any uh, ups and minuses and just uh, let you choose. Oh, and sorry if your favorite solution was not listed there out of about 100 that exist for uh, for this purpose. I just use the most popular ones. But hey, the spider mastermind is dead and we are finishing this talk. But now be to for uh, Sam is at the moment beaming me the uh, all the results of your choices. In the meanwhile, Let's have a uh, little nostalgia ride. All right, and the results are in. So what kind of GitHub solution do we have? Building a command line tool and creating an operator were a tie. Okay, yeah. Um, I actually, with, uh, with the team on my uh, uh, big GitOps project, uh, we started with a command line tool and then created an operator. So uh, this is uh, this kind of matches that. So I totally agree with uh, with both solutions. Um, monitoring alerts are the uh, most popular choice for uh, for what to do about uh, how to uh, see when deployments fail. Yeah, that's uh, I've I've never done that honestly. So it's uh, it's it's very interesting for me. I would I would love to uh, to see that uh, in practice. The third is. Uh, using a uh, script in a pipeline to sync things to the uh, to to commit from the CI pipeline to the GitOps repo. So I see people uh, like the the simple solutions instead of an API uh, server. Um, okay, Argo CD wins as favorite uh, favorite GitOps tool. Cool, very cool. Then. Uh, Repo per namespace is the uh, most popular one. That's uh, I like that because that's my favorite one too. And I've been told by a lot of people that they don't like that. So I'm glad that today it, uh, it wins. Um, okay, well, uh, continuous deployment, bit misspelled, but uh, that one wins clearly uh, the sixth level, which is uh, uh, not, uh, I'm not surprised. And uh, the seventh level is won by Walt. Okay, I my my favorite is Sealed Secrets, but uh, yeah, Walt is a, is a really awesome technology, so uh, I'm I'm not surprised there either. And we have plain YAMLs in the uh, GitOps repo. Okay, that's a that's a uh, interesting uh, interesting choice. I I thought uh, it, we we would end up with either Helm or Customize, and probably Helm is the biggest most popular tool. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, congratulations for uh, we have saved uh, Daisy or did we? Oops. 
scary things. And thank you very much for uh, for listening to my talk. I hope you uh, you enjoyed it and learned something today and enjoy the rest of the conference. Back to you, Mark. Adam, my compliments. Now, of course, this is subjective, but uh, they're my favorite slides of the day. And I'm sorry to everyone else who tried really hard, but no one's ever going to win over Doom slides with Doom music, with Doom competitions in the middle, and a tweet from John Romero. Adam, well done. And also, shout out to, sorry, who was doing all the, putting the slides together in the background? Uh, Sam, Sam was uh, helping me with uh, with much of the graphics and uh, and yes, and putting together the final slide in the background. Sam Atal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Sam. Yes. Oh, Sam, who's okay. Sam, who's also been in the background running most of the conference today. Okay, yeah, amazing, you. amazing. We've I'm got uh, a couple of questions. Time. Yeah. So one of the questions is: Do you already know about Cube Doom? You can kill pods inside your Kubernetes cluster by shooting them in Doom. Yes, I, I've uh, I heard about it. I, I saw a video of it. I was uh, too lazy to uh, properly try it out yet, but it's a very, very cool project. I wish I've done it myself. Very nice. <laughs> Good. Uh, we're getting all sorts of no other questions, but just lots of praise saying it was epic. Uh, thanks, Adam. Amazing presentation. Thanks, Adam and Sam. Presentation topics, slides, animation themes on point. Well done. Coming in from Ash R. So I think everybody definitely appreciated that. I'm wondering if we could um, convince people here to join one of the uh, one of the software circus gaming competitions one day. We normally play Counter Strike, but I think a multiplayer Doom would be would be a lot of fun. That's a very very good idea, Mark. We should totally do that. Cool. All right. Uh, if there are any questions, get them in there now. I'm going to talk about some of our sponsors quickly. So again, big thank you to Equinix Metal, Cycloid, Giant Swarm, Instana, and Kinfolk, all of whom I still believe have people in the booths go over there for fun things in the Brella app. Also Container Solutions, of course, who've done most of the heavy lifting in putting all this together and who are sponsoring the t-shirt raffle, 200 of which will be given away uh, to anyone who registered uh, later on. Uh, in the meantime, if we take a little look to what's coming up next, everybody's back in this track for Joe Bader, uh, who's going to be apologizing for YAML, which I think is going to be a popular topic. Uh, after that, we're moving into the spooky cocktails. Um, you know, I'm lying. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't already had a cocktail, but I'm looking forward to making another one. And after that, there's just one more talk. And then it's all over, which is a little bit sad. But all that's left for me to do is say, Adam, thank you so much for this talk. So much creativity and, and a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Mark. I'm happy you, uh, you liked it. Great. I'll see everyone back here in two minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs>